Hello, you are listening to Talk to Seattle, and I am your host, Jason Rigdon. On this episode, we have Matthew Hines, who is running for U.S. Congress in Washington's first district. But first, I want to remind you to leave a rating review for the show on Apple Podcasts. Right now, we've only got five ratings. Luckily, all those are five-star ratings, but I really would like to get some more. So please do me a favor and leave Talk to Seattle, a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Yeah, my name is Matthew Hines, and I'm running for uh, the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. I'm in the first district of Washington, which means I'm on the east side, basically, of King County. And then I'm also Whatcom, Skagit, and Snohomish. Okay, yeah. So it's a, it covers a pretty large area. It, it sure does. I spent, uh, I, I've been putting up signs, you know, the, the famous campaign signs. And I'll say it's a lot of area to cover. We just went out yesterday and we um, just to check signs and put some more up. We went from uh, where I-90 gets off on North Bend all the way out to Monroe, Sultan, Snohomish. And we still have to do um, Bellingham, Mount Vernon. So it's a it's pretty big area. But um, also it's uh, also it works out well for me because as we talked about a little bit earlier, I do a podcast called Encounters USA where one of the topics is Bigfoot. So that's Bigfoot country. So it really works out well for me. And if you don't mind me asking, this is um, what uh, political party are you affiliated with? Well, I am an independent. I am I'm a completely independent candidate. And if you'd like to, if you'd like to know why, I'd be glad to tell you. Yes, yes, I would. I would love that. All right. Well, I originally ran. I've always been a Republican, and um, I ran in 2018 as a Republican. I got about. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of money to spend, and um, I got about close to 8,000 votes. And the thing is, is that when I went to these Republican, you know, you go to give these stump speeches, whatever, um, people just looked at me. I, I want to give uh, free tuition, right, uh, to college kids, um, especially the ones that don't have the money to pay for college. Um, and people are going, what? I w- how are you going to pay for that? Well, I want to legalize marijuana across the nation um, and stop putting all these people in jail for something that it's legal to do in, I don't know, what, 20 states now? So um, people go, what? You want to legalize marijuana? And these guys are, a, a lot of the people in the Republican Party are are old, you know? And so I'm going around and, and there were, the younger people, they could identify with that and say, oh, finally, somebody's addressing this issue. But when I sent a letter to the King County Republican Party asking for support, uh, the woman just basically said, you're really offensive and your program is offensive and nobody in the Republican Party will have anything to do with you. And I don't think even the Democrat Party will have anything to do with you. So you want to hear why I'm not a Democrat? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, please. Well, a good friend of mine is Nick Lakata. I don't know if you're familiar with Nick, but mm-hmm. he served. You are familiar with him? Yes. Okay, so I'm uh, not personally, but <laughs> okay, but so he served many, um, like five terms on the Seattle City Council, and he said he was a little bit more receptive. He said the thing that you're the things you're talking about have got to be discussed, but not now. <laughs> We can't discuss them now, right? So I'm talking about basically, and just so people understand, I grew up dirt poor in Squim. And growing up dirt poor in Squim is a lot better than growing up dirt poor in a lot of places. But the fact is, I've never had money. I went into teaching. So of course, I will, just to guarantee that I would never have money. And I'm running because there is nobody speaking for people like us that just don't you know, are are having it, it's harder and harder to make ends meet. And as far as your kids having a future with what's going on now with the politicians we have now, we know we can pretty much forget that. So that's why I'm running. I'm a veteran of the 82nd Airborne. Um, I have always spent my life helping my country. I've taught overseas in Oman, in Saudi Arabia, um, just to show those people that Americans are not these monsters in spite of the fact we're killing people by the bushel. Um, I've always done things to help my country, but as uh, I guess I'm just not acceptable to either party. Now, here's the problem, is that I am 
like I'm pro gun, right? I think that in the Second Amendment, we were guaranteed those rights for a reason. But I'm also an environmentalist. Um, I, I also support these Black Lives Matter movements. So I can, you know, you have they are trying to pigeonhole everybody. And so if you have beliefs about protecting the environment, well, you can't be a Republican. And if you have beliefs that this Black Lives Matter thing has a lot of legitimacy and it's about like just how these laws are set up, um, there's just no, um, most people do not fall into either Democrat or Republican. Most people fall in the middle, just like me. So I, um, after getting, you know, the the cold shoulder from the from the Republicans and with Nick explaining that, yeah, those are things that are important, but we can't do them now. Why? Because the rich people don't want you talking about it. And so just Jason, to finish this off, I filled out all these surveys. Right. And the surveys are about, well, are there it's about abortion. It's about this. It's about that. And you know what? We've been talking about the same crap for since the 1960s. And all, nothing's been done, but what has been done is our education system has been destroyed. Our legal system is so inaccessible to a common person that doesn't have money that these are the real issues. And these are the things I am fighting tooth and nail for is we need to have an education system that works. We don't, it's not a political, you know, uh, fun house for the Democratic Party or the Republican Party or whoever. Education is education. And if we don't meet our obligations to those kids, and I'm telling everybody right now, these kids that are five years old right now, um, if these kids and the ones that come in the next 20 years do not have the education to save us, to solve our problems, we have absolutely no future. We have to do nothing right now but make sure these five-year-olds and the ones that are coming after, these kids have got to have a quality education or not only the United States doesn't exist, the world goes back to the dark ages. And, you know, you can say conspiracy theories all you want, but the bottom line is that's where we're heading. So if we don't have education, and I'm talking about two aspects of education, the classroom and the home. And if you look at my website, I say every individual in the United States is a teacher. And until we accept that fact, if you're bagging groceries, you have something to teach. If you're a mechanic, you have something to teach. If you're a parent, you have something to teach. Until we accept that fact that we are teaching, like the media, whatever, we need to ask ourselves, what are we teaching? And if we start to ask that simple question, I think a lot of people will change their behavior because they start to understand these younger kids are watching and they're going to do just what I told them to do. They're going to do just like me. So is that is that the world we want? So anyway, this is what I'm running for. And um, and really, there's a lot of things that we have to fix. But if we don't fix education, we'll have nothing. Is there anything like special in your background or personal history that you'd be bringing to um, Congress that you think would be uh, special? Absolutely. I have a master's degree in education. Um, I have spent uh, 13 years teaching. Well, I taught... I've taught for over 20 years in the U.S., but I also taught for 13 years as a uh, university lecturer in the Sultanate of Oman. I worked for the Ministry of Higher Education, and also I worked as a trainer for Northrop Grumman and Raytheon in um, like military type training situations in Saudi Arabia. So I've had exposure to a lot of different uh, like cultures, a lot of different teaching approaches. And um, when I went to Oman the first time, I looked around and what we were doing was not working. And so I said, if we don't figure this out, we're all going to lose our jobs because these kids and the sultan of the country brought us in there specifically to teach these kids English, Western, you know, model stuff. And um, they just didn't, it was so foreign to them, they didn't get it. So I just fought and fought. We have to do something to make this work. And, and eventually we did. But um, that's what I'm bringing to Congress is that the issue now, and I go down to Seattle, I've been down there twice to the, um, whatever the, I keep getting it, Chaz, Chop, whatever. 
And I keep talking to people, and the first thing they tell me is, I say, I'm running for Congress. I want to know what the problem is so we can solve this. They say, you know, you're the first guy down here that we've even seen down here. And I'm white, right? And so when they see me down there and, oh, you're, you're a politician, they are just so excited that somebody's actually going down there uh, to listen to what they have to say. So if, if our schools are not working for African-American kids or somebody else, we got to figure out why it's not. Because if we don't, well, you see what happened. But everybody down there, when they listened to me talking, said, you are the, f-, and this is not white people, these are African Americans, and they're very upset. They're saying you're the first person to come down here and talk about education and how important it is. So <clears throat> um, that's it. And I also want to add, Jason, if I can, is that I, you know, we talked about my district. My district is mostly white with some Hispanic, not a lot of African Americans. And so I don't have to be down there. That's not going to help me politically. In fact, it's probably going to hurt me politically because I have these people saying, oh, why are you pandering to those Black Lives Matter people? Well, because because they matter. You know, the, everybody is a, I, I'm a religious person. Everybody is a child of God. It doesn't matter. God made people in all colors and with all types of skills and, and um, things that they can do to help people and to contribute. And um, we have got, and I'm just going to add also, I, in, Seoul, in Oman, Saudi Arabia, you have every race, every culture, and everybody gets along fine. You know why? No media stirring them up. So um, that's my thing about education is that if it's not working and it's not, we have very spare, uh, sparse time to figure this out. So we have to get started like yesterday. But when I get into Congress, that's the first thing that we're going to start doing is start looking at how do we make education work. Why do you think the education system has been failing so many people right now? Because you, they will not um, – uh, teaching positions are given out to uh, children of teachers. Um, I was told when I was getting my master's degree – now, I went – I had to spend four years in the Army because my family didn't have money for college, so I had to go get on something like the GI Bill. Went through four years in the 82nd Airborne, jumping out of airplanes, could have died any day. I uh, could have sh- been shot, blown up, lost my limbs, but I spent four years just so I could get college. That's how important education was for me. And when I was in my master's program, I graduated from Wazoo. And then I went to Alaska, and um, uh, in my master's program, they said, well, if you're a white male and you don't coach, you're probably not going to get a job teaching history. Really, I spent, I spent my whole life studying history. I spent four years in the Army. I know history. And, um, and when I did my, um, my uh, teacher competency exams, I did it in half the time allotted, and people thought I just filled in the bubbles. I got in the 94th percentile for the nation. And that didn't matter to anybody. The only thing that mattered was that I was white and I didn't coach. And that's what every school that I applied for wanted to know. What do you coach, really? Well, what do you think is wrong with our education system? The people are hired for political reasons, and they're hired to so it's uh, fun and games. It's so they can, you know, have a little circus going on there. But with all this money, we're dumping into these systems. And let me just talk about racism for a second. How many African-American kids cannot get an education because they are um, told by coaches, oh, you're black, you're tall, you're fast, you're whatever, you're going to play sports. And if you don't play sports, well, nobody's going to like you. You know, you're not going to get that favorable treatment. So how many engineers and doctors and people that could have led in the black community got sucked into sports that never benefited them for anything? So these are all huge problems that have to be addressed, and they have to be addressed yesterday. What do you think are the biggest issues facing your district that can be addressed nationally? The biggest thing uh, right now is they cannot shut down these businesses. They absolutely cannot shut down these businesses. And the, the reaction that they had to this coronavirus without even getting facts or data and just Basically, it was a it was a political thing, and it still is that if you're a conservative, you think this is a bunch of crap. If you're a, a liberal, well, you're wearing that mask while you're 
driving the car by yourself because you're you're into that kind of thing. And um, the biggest thing facing us right now is that this country was founded on the fact that you could come here, have a business and prosper and nobody's going to come and take that from you. Well, they just did. They took it from everybody in our district, except for the Fortune 500, uh, the very wealthy people, or the people that contribute to the Democratic Party. Everybody else is going to be starving to death in about six or seven months. So that is the biggest um, issue. And I'm running for as a Republican, or as a Republican, as an independent, because I'm not going there to play games. I'm going there to find out who's going to give people the benefits, the things they need right now. And I'm with them. I don't care if they're Republican. I don't care who it is. People need things in Washington state. People need to go back to work and not just the wealthy people that are associated with the Democrats. Everybody needs to go back to work and have their business open. So um, there is not anyway. I don't want to get into this coronavirus stuff, but I will say uh, I've seen enough. I've had videos where people are talking about um, the the real issues of the coronavirus and how who is really catching it and et cetera, et cetera, and how um, the pharmaceutical companies that sponsor the news keep telling you, oh, it's blowing up, it's blowing up. Well, let me tell you something. The, when my mother, who has five kids and tons of grandkids, the, when this thing first came out, she lives in Everett, they stuck her in the hospital with the first guy that had coronavirus in the U.S., Why did they do that? They stuck my mother who had a cold. They said, you need to go to that hospital. So we've seen that Como, we've seen that our governor here, they stuck people in these nursing homes that they knew were going to spread coronavirus. So that is the big issue. We need to get a handle on what this is, but we need to get people back to work and they need to go back to work yesterday. So you do not support any of the uh, quarantine measures? I believe that from what people have finally figured out, there is a certain um, demographic that is at high risk, and those people need to be protected. I live in an apartment, and there are dogs pissing and crapping on the carpets, It is, you know, and they, they do a good job to clean it up. But they're telling people that, oh, you have to wear a mask when you go around in this apartment. You know, it's one of these, I call them uh, millennial uh, co- uh, coffins, because millennials will move into these, and they'll never be able to afford to move out. But um, I mean, these things are filthy, and they're telling us we have to wear a mask. Why don't you have the dogs quit spissing and, and doing their thing on the, on the carpets? And um, so, yeah, I, I, I think that um, what should have happened is that businesses should have been informed that this is very dangerous. Um, we need to take appropriate measures, but we're, we just don't have the right to shut down your business. If you want to shut it down, shut it down. But I just don't think, honestly, Jason... From what I've seen, it looks like a huge hoax, and it looks like the people, I mean, when you look at the people that died, who died of, like, um, pneumonia, but then they said, oh, they died of COVID, Um, I mean, all these people that died of other diseases, they just said, they lied and said they died of COVID, so we don't really know how deadly it was. And then the other thing is, as soon as the China dumped that on us, then they went on the march. They're uh, attacking Australia. I mean, we don't even know how long Australia has left. Uh, they're going after India. They're going after Japan. They use this like in World War I on the gas attacks. They send the gas across, and then they send the troops across. Well, that's what they did here. And I think that they just didn't get the reaction they wanted out of this disease. And Jason, also, I've been researching this. I have a couple of YouTube channels, and I've been researching this since it basically started out. And from what I have seen, I thought it was like The Stand. You know that movie, The Stand, or the yeah, book? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, because it, it started in, uh, according to the things that I read, it started in the U.S. in a defense, like a, a defense lab. Then it went to UNC in Chapel Hill, and then it got its way over to China. And the whole time it's being funded by the Gates Foundation. So how did it get, how did it get to China, right, through all that? 
So there's a lot of things going on that need to be investigated. And that is the other thing I'm doing when I get to Congress is I want to find some people that will pass legislation that we can start investigating uh, what happened here. And I, if we have to file or if we have to pass the 28th Amendment that says the United States government or no government has the right to pass uh, or to shut down any private business without a warrant, then I, that's what we're going to do. And I will just yell and scream every day. I'll say, when are we going to give people the right to the uh, promise of the peace, or I'm sorry, uh, uh, the pursuit of happiness? Um, and because right now uh, they've taken everything that you and I thought we would enjoy as Americans, they've taken it all away. The Constitution doesn't even apply anymore. What would you do? So I, I gather that you're skeptical of the nature of the coronavirus, but let's say there was there was an argument about a virus that was spreading. Um, we still would not support any kind of quarantine measures? Oh, absolutely. Um, let, me, let me say that clearly. One of the risks of this is that it's like the boy who cried wolf. What happens when something really comes along? And people just say, I mean, Jason, I don't know one person, not one person I mean, I know hundreds, thousands of people. I don't know one person that has the coronavirus or had it. So, you know, and normally you would hear of people, oh, this guy's got it. No, did you hear about Bob and Dave and Betty? I haven't heard of anybody. I mean, I have like 500 friends on Facebook and um, nobody's had the coronavirus. I have friends all around the world. Nobody has had this virus. So, Anyway, um, but the the big danger here is that it is like the boy who cried wolf when something when they unleash something and who knows when that's going to happen, um, then people will say, oh, it's not really it's not really um, worth t paying attention to until people really start dying and it's too late. So, no, I would um, make sure that the government does not have the right to pass these down. The first thing that needs to happen is an advisory and the advisory has to tell the truth. And right now that seems to be the biggest problem. And as we get closer to the election, you see every day there's, I mean, we're record coronavirus cases. Where can I go to a hospital and see these coronavirus cases? Can I see the sheets? Can I see the, the, the hospital registers of the people that have this coronavirus case? And do they have other things? I don't have any access to these records. Do you? Uh, no, not, no, not no, personally. I mean, nobody does. Yeah. So, and Jason, you know, we talked about, we talked about, um, my other podcast, which is Encounters USA, and the whole premise of that podcast is that we're investigating aliens, Bigfoot, Dogman. Why? Because these are things that the government lies and lies about continuously. And what it's gotten down to, and I, I'm just going to quote Governor Jesse Ventura, um, who was the governor of Minnesota, he said when he was governor, everything is blacked out. When he wanted to get information on something, it was all blacked out. And he was the governor. And he didn't have the security clearance to find out what the government was up to. So there is something seriously wrong here. So if we can get a government that we can trust and they will give us the correct information and we don't have people coming out later saying, well, that was all wrong. They're just trying to sell pharmaceuticals, um, then I, I'll trust the government. But until then, I will not. And I, I think about 60% of Americans have just had enough of the lies. And my Encounter, uh, Encounters USA podcast is kind of, that's kind of a, you know, a side thing, but it really underscores what the problem is with this country. Yeah. If you make it to Congress, where you be pushing for, you know, uh, there are claims of all kinds of classified files and stuff. Will you be pushing for the release of those or would that be not a priority? I don't think it's going to be necessary. I think that they're going to uh, release them anyway, but, um, I will tell you this, that, and, and I had a long talk with my wife. We are not rich. We are not politically well-connected. And there are people that will kill you for saying certain things, right? I mean, even up to the president of the United States. And you can go back to John Kennedy. And people are very convinced now that one of the reasons that he was killed because he wanted to uh, find out what happened at Roswell and he wanted to release it. 
So I am not, I, I will do what is, what will keep me alive and able to serve the constituents of the first congressional district. I'm not going to do anything that's going to risk my life or my ability to serve people. And, and unfortunately, that's the government we have. It will take time to change that. But right now, we have so many other things we have to do that, you know, it's, uh, it's something that would be down the road. But anyway, they've also started releasing this stuff. And uh, if you listen to my podcast, uh, you're going to find a lot of pretty interesting information about who these aliens are. I talked to so many people about who Bigfoot is and the Dogman. And um, it's just, it's fascinating. So if this stuff ever comes out, I think we're going to find out that we have a great, uh, wonderful future ahead of us because we really are fantastic, wonderful um, beings. But people right now, I mean, of course, you look at what's going on now and everybody's just reduced down to the level of animals. And we're not animals. We are the, mo- the best things the universe has, has to offer. So that's what we need to start to accept. If elected, what would be some of your other legislative priorities? Well, if you look on my um, website, which is vote, numeral four, Heinz, H-E-I-N-E-S dot com, uh, I have what I call the real deal. And the first thing that, you know, it's a little late because I started this in 2018. I ran for the Senate then. And um, as I said in my view, if you read my website, all these things that I tried to do then have just blown up. So the one thing is, the first thing is stop the federal government from borrowing. Now, I don't know if you understand what the federal government does when they spend money, but we have all of our money is going to servicing the debt and entitlements, which means that like 70% of the money we take into taxes is spent already. So what they have to do to spend money, uh, like when they want to have a bailout or, or all these things that they're doing now is they go out and sell bonds, right? So they're not printing money, they're printing debt. And who are they pushing the debt on? They're pushing it on the you know, next generations. They're pushing it on us. And once people stop, uh, like China has already said, they're going to start selling our, our debt because they don't believe we're ever going to pay them back. Um, this is the thing that I wanted to have happen is that we should have stopped allowing the government to borrow money. So I don't know where that stands now, because if you stop that now, well, they're basically um, pumping up Wall Street, because if Wall Street tanks, then that's the that's the um, mark of the economy. And that's how they calculated and and described the depression. Oh, the stock market crashed. So so they're just that's the one thing they have to keep uh, selling this debt, our debt for is to keep the stock market um, going. So along with that. There's another thing that I want to talk about, and that is these um, uh, immigration, um, they are using immigration, number one, because we can't produce students that can fill jobs. That's the number one. We can't, uh, people don't have, like, there's a lot of jobs out there, and they all don't pay enough to live on. So we are having people come, come across the border that will work for dirt cheap, illegally in a lot of cases, and um, they have no rights whatsoever. And I am sick and tired of that because the reason that they're coming across is because corporations don't want to pay people uh, to, to do this work. And, it, and it's a huge cycle, I mean, because they can't compete with slavery in Asia, et cetera, et cetera. But we have got to come to terms. We cannot have these people coming across with no rights or anything. Now, I worked in Oman and Saudi Arabia. I had a labor card and I worked. My company took care of me or the ministry took care of me. When I was finished, I went home and they took me to the, they made sure I got on a plane and had a ticket out. And that's how it should work in the U.S. If we want to use these people and they are fantastic people and we love them and we love to have them here, but we cannot have this corporate welfare where they come here and work for Walmart for 10 bucks an hour, and then they have to go on welfare to support their family, et cetera. We have got to pay people living wages. 
So we have got to figure that out. But we cannot keep having people crossing this border. We don't know who they are, et cetera, et cetera, and risking their lives. Those people are coming here to help us and do an invaluable service, and they need some respect. And if you look at my campaign signs, it says Voto Mateo. I'm probably the only guy in Washington that has ever had a bilingual um, campaign sign. But these people are important. And um, they are helping us out so much, and they need to be recognized. So um, when we talk about the things that I want to do, we have to um, have living wages for people. Um, we have to really shut down this immigration. Look at what's happening now. Um, in all these cities, we have people, we don't even know who they are. And let me tell you something. I've been all over the world. No country allows people to just come in to their country, like basically un, unchecked. In fact, the immigration, you cannot even, I can't go and live in Saudi Arabia. I can't go live in Oman. They will kick me out because I'm a Christian. So what's, where's the, where's the reciprocality here? So that's another thing that I think immigration is, um, I, I don't know what it is, but in 1998 or 1996, they passed a law that said, Anybody could come here based uh, regardless of their affiliation with any group, organization, et cetera. So basically anybody can come here. And now you have people going around. And I've been down in Seattle, and you know what they told me? Uh, blacks and whites. They say, we have mercenaries down here, like Blackwater mercenaries that are down here uh, causing problems. When I was down there, I saw a, like a 16-year-old white supremacist trying to remove barricades. And the people there were going, you can't remove those. And they're not being mean to him. They thought he was kind of crazy. But, but this is what's going on here. So um, I have um, 12 things that I want to do. I call it the real deal. And you have to look at my website to do it. But it all is based on education and human decency. I have to ask about the uh, kind of elephant in the room regarding American politics is what is your position on Donald Trump? Uh, I support Donald Trump. I support um, this is the thing about Trump. Um, if you did not have um, the Democrats doing the things that they've been doing for so long, you would not have Donald Trump. Donald Trump is, is the result. And I don't know what is going on behind the scenes, but you look at it. You have the media, and I mean, Donald Trump is a media guy, right? So you have the media split on one side, and you know, for Donald Trump, you got everybody for Donald Trump, or you got everybody for the Democrats, right? I don't believe in everything Donald Trump does. I, I am so furious about like, when I go to Forks, or you know, I do a lot of camping, whatever, and they're just, I see all these logging trucks. Who's replanting these trees? You know, why are they, ter you know, anyway, I don't want to get too far into it. But Donald Trump is the first politician that we've ever elected. And I've been through a lot of them that went to office and said what he was, and he did what he said he was going to do. And so anybody that does that, I have ultimate respect for because People are just sick, and I don't know how old you are, Jason, but I've seen ever since um, Jimmy Carter, I've seen all these people come into office, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. The problems are still there. So um, Donald Trump came, I don't care. I, I think he is self-involved. I think he serves Donald Trump, but he also does things to um, help the country, and if he does that, I'm, I'm fine with him. And when I go there, um, I'm just going to go talk to him. I'm going to say, look, you help me with education and you have, and, and I'm sure he will say, I'm glad you're here. We need to fix education, but I'm going to go to him and say, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. You help the people of the first congressional district. You give us what we want and I will give you what you want. And I'm also going to tell the Democratic leadership that you give the first congressional district what we want and what we need we'll be glad to help. I think one of your points on uh, the real deal was um, breaking up the uh, tech monopolies. Is that something you still support? Absolutely. Uh, as you see, and also I just want to point out that if you see 
um, what's happening in Washington. A lot of the things that I've recommended two years ago in 2018 are happening now. And um, they are now suing Google as a monopoly. Where did they get that idea? So absolutely. Um, and the thing is, is that these companies, um, I'm not sure about how familiar you are with American history, but in the last century, you had the robber barons who were able to control the oil because nobody knew how oil was going to take over. You know, the cars were going to come. Nobody could foresee that. Nobody could foresee the end result of Microsoft having a monopoly over the world. And now you have this Bill Gates who has got, I mean, he is up to all kinds of no good and he's trying to, he's doing this. I mean, I, I mean, they want him arrested in India and I think he did something to people in Africa that they want him arrested as far as I understand it. And these companies should never, Jeff Bezos, Zuckerberg, they should never have the kind of power that they have. All they are is techno nerds that got lucky with the technology. Bill Gates is not a doctor. Zuckerberg is not a doctor. He's not a politician. He dropped out of Harvard. So they have these people have scant educations. And where do they have the right to even have any input on the future and the destiny of mankind? And I say they don't. And I say, unless you know history, you have no right to go and try to make it. Because you're only going to make it horrible. And, and history is full of that. Well, these companies gather up like tons of information about us, and it's just pretty much unregulated. Right. And then also the other uh, side of that coin is that these um, tech companies, you have to ask, well, how, how did Facebook survive? They got massive funding because they were the intelligence agencies were running um, operations, spy operations through all of them. So they got massive funding. And if you look into the original, um, whatever you call angel investors, that was the CIA invested in Facebook. So um, that's got to stop. They, I want to just give all these different companies grants to come in and be Facebook, be Twitter, uh, just let's have some competition because competition is American. Uh, the, these monopolies, that's what Teddy Roosevelt was all about. And I just want to add when I ran as a Republican, I ran as a reform Republican like President Roosevelt. You know, you're running as an independent. Um, do you have any plans for trying to do anything about kind of breaking up this uh, political duopoly where the Democrats and Republicans kind of control basically all politics in this country? Um, I think what's going to happen, it's just going to happen naturally. I, I would I would be surprised if there were not a number of independents that get elected in this election. But, uh, Jason, there I mean, there are things that we have to do immediately, like stop these shutdowns and get people back to work, get them help, get them whatever they need. Um, and that has to happen first. So all these other things... People have to be able to survive. Kids have to be able to go to school and kids have to understand we care. We care about you. We care about your education. We care about your homes and your parents. Do you have any uh, final thoughts for our listeners? Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for listening to me. Um, I, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it might sound a little bit out there, but um, I think I think I, I think about these things all the time. And um, as a veteran, I took an oath to uh, defend this uh, country and to support the Constitution against its enemies. And the last thing I want to say um, is that these people down in Seattle. Um, these people are, are just normal people. You have a lot of people down there that have uh, drug addiction problems. You have people down there that have mental issues that have just been turned loose on the street. A lot of those people down in these chaz or chop, they're homeless people, right? That just moved up there because that's what it is. Now, if you go down to that area and you open your eyes, which I have, I've gone down there twice. I can't even find a place to park. Do you know what's right next to chop? Seattle University. So where do you think they're kidding? Who do you think is doing the protesting? Those people at Seattle University. Capitol Hill has always been a liberal bastion, okay? So all those people are 
are liberals. And what's happened since I've been down there is people come up to me, they say, you know, we've got Blackwater down here, we've got uh, mercenaries, uh, we've got kidnappings, and we've had to chase people off again and again and again. So what I want to find out, and, and I want to just put in my support for the people who have done this, and I mean, I'm sorry that I had to go that way, um, but this is the result of, I'm sorry to say it, but democratic policies. This is their fault, um, and what has happened is people are just uh, sick of it. And when I went down there and I said, is this the result of poor democratic leadership? Not one person said no. And when I started talking about, this is about not having adequate education, everyone said yes. So, and the other thing is they said, you're the only person that's come down here to talk to us. No politician has come down. And I said, I'm not even in your district. So, but I need to know this. And I will, I will say this, that, um, and this is kind of my mantra to people that say, oh, you are pandering to these people. Really? Well, these are human beings. And I would rather pander to these people and lose votes than lose my conscience. Because these are real people with real issues and real concerns. And these are the same concerns white people and black people have. And we have got to let the media or stop the media from separating us. Because I talk to them, the African Americans have the same problems. And so once we shut the media out and shut them down, then we can have really meaningful discussions. And you see it's happening right now. Blacks and whites are talking, and it just freaks people out. But let's keep this going. Let's keep the, mo the, the momentum going. And just don't I, – I mean, I can't stand uh, this property – you know, destruction and monuments, whatever. I'm a history guy. If you start to destroy our history, you destroy yourself. So um, that's what I have to say is that have some understanding, have some patience. And if you don't, if you hear this stuff or, or people saying stuff on the media, go find out for yourself. Don't listen to that. Go find out. Talk to those people. And and they were so happy to have one politician, even though he's not in their district, to come down there to see what's going on. So, And if people want to learn more about you and your campaign, where should they go? They should go to Vote for Heinz. That is Vote, numeral four, uh, Heinz, H E I N E S dot com. And um, they can see my website. I have a YouTube channel of the same name. I'm also Twitter and Facebook. And you know, Jason, how you can remember me? How's that? Well, if I get behind my opponent, my last name is Heinz, right? Okay. So I can always catch up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, get it? Yes. And I'll make sure I have those um, links in the uh, show notes too. Okay. So Jason, I, I really appreciate having me on the show. It's I've listened to it and man, this is a great, it's a great format. It's a great um, idea. And I wish I would have thought of it. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We, we try. We'll, we'll see how this, uh, this new political season, you know, everything's so crazy right now. It's hard to, Hard to find a balance or a, a direction, really. Well, I don't think there is a balance. Actually, I think I think it's a free for all, and and you're going to hear a lot of different things. I think I'll probably be the the most I, I don't know how to say it, but probably the the most provocative um, that you're probably going to hear for a while. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right, Jason, I appreciate it too. You have a great day. You've been listening to Talk to Seattle, and I have been your host, Jason Rigdon. All the links for our guest are going to be in the show notes. Once again, if you like this show, if you want to help talk to Seattle, please leave us a rating review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps people discover the show. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good day.